All right, they were bringing the heat in an investigation of the Fast and Furious gun program. House Republicans on the Hill grilling Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano, taking her to task for the lack of communication between Homeland Security and the Justice Department and Eric Holder. I find that absolutely stunning. And for you to have two dead agents and have never had a conversation with Eric Holder about Fast and Furious and about this area is totally unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. How much time has expired? The Mr. Chairman, I know Representative Chaffetz has his opinion on this matter, as, his, as the tone of his question reveals, but I simply would uh, suggest that no one takes the deaths of agents more seriously than I, uh, and also that one of the reasons uh, that we have not directly dealt with the Attorney General on this is he very quickly and appropriately put this matter in the hands of the Inspector General. And there was a whole lot more of that happening yesterday. Congressman Darrell Issa is chairman of the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform, my guest from the Hill. And, sir, good morning and welcome back here to America. Well, Bill, thanks, thanks for covering this and, uh, and particularly thanks for covering how uh, Jason Chaffetz rightfully so said that you can't say you're serious, you can't go to the funerals for photo ops and then not even bring up the subject with your counterpart month after month after month. Well, let's get to some of the heat of the matter from yesterday. Based on your questioning and the questioning of others, you are convinced that someone is hiding something where? Now, who is hiding what and where? Well, the most important thing is they're hiding the basic question of month after month as this program continued to put guns in the hands of the worst guys, even before Brian Terry and, and Jaime Zapata were killed, why in the world did they miss so many opportunities to stop this program? They all want to say that they're brief, they're on top, they're running the show, and then they want to say they don't re read their briefings when it shows that Fast and Furious was briefed repeatedly uh, over five times to uh, Eric Holder. And as you saw yesterday, Janet Napolitano wants to go to funerals and have photo ops and tell the family she'll do everything, and then she won't even have that conversation in the two months between Brian Terry's murder and the time that, I, that very quick IG investigation began. Which may, the, in the end, prove a terrible lack of communication, but is that against the law? What, what, where is the legal lack, boundary a, here? It's not a lack of communication in, from a sense of legal. It's a failure to perform your lawful duties. These individuals, like myself, like Jason Chaffetz, we have a constitutional responsibility to the American people. And in the case of the tall, top law enforcement officer, Eric Holder, and the top security officer for our security around our borders and around the world, Janet Napolitano, they have to talk. They have to talk daily, weekly. They have to communicate. And for them to have months go on and say, this wasn't important enough to talk, or after something as mundane as an IG investigation. Understand, the IG works for Eric Holder. He said, go investigate. Basically, what he said is, go find people to blame at a low level. And she's in the process of doing that. Real investigation is soul searching at the top and particularly close to the top, where Lanny Brewer and so many other individuals knew about this program, knew it was wrong, and failed to stop it. And time I don't know where this, she warned yesterday not to rush to judgment. Ultimately, where does this lead, do you believe, based on what you know today? But we're so far past rushing to judgment that we're at a time where it's practically just historical. You can't go months and now year plus past when this program should have been shut down and, and, and pretend that we're in a hurry. Where this program goes is we're going to continue to ask who knew what and when. Eric Holder clearly was disingenuous when he came before Congress and claimed that he only knew about Fast and Furious, quote, a few weeks before that May 9th question. Uh, he obviously knew more, and we'd like to know when. But Janet Napolitano wants to be uh, hands over her ears and her eyes and pretend that she's doing her job. Well, she just doesn't want to know how Brian Terry killed, how, was killed, why uh, Jaime Zapata wasn't properly uh, protected, and what weapons killed him. These are important issues north of the border, and for those hundreds of yeah, people murdered right south now, of the border, it's important, too. It appears right now these answers are elusive. There's another topic I want to get to now, another issue. Apparently, sure. a taxpayer loan has been intended for a Russian steel company doing business in Michigan, $730 million worth. The Energy Department says the money, it's been committed but not spent. Now, others are suggesting this is another Solyndra. Uh, is it? And do you expect a reversal on this commitment because the money has not been put out there yet? 
We'd like to have a reversal on the commitment because, first of all, this purchase would have gone through with or without the government backstop. Secondly, there were no jobs created. What's one of the great scandals here is, remember, this is just making steel, and as a matter of fact, a type of steel for which there's an excess in the market. But more importantly, the jobs that are being, quote, created here are being moved from other plants. So this is an example, no jobs created, not green energy, not necessary to make this happen, and not a U.S. investor. So on every possible count the American people care about, this loan never should have passed the sniff test. Well, and we'll see whether or not it stops now. Darrell Issa, thank you for your time. We'll watch thank the you, Bill. from here. All right.